Okay, this is the new X6. There will be a few cool functions I will just share with you, which I think is really, really interesting. First one will be what we call this as the smear tool. I don't know if you all have heard of this before. This is irritating. Okay, smear tool. Now, we don't need you to illustrate things like that. Okay, you may, you may get it from some stock libraries, from some designers that you have, that you think that uh, this bird is too kind. Okay, you want a bird that is a bit more aggressive, things like this. Okay, so now in this um, Corel Draw, which is really fantastic, I find that you can do from before to after very, very quickly. You don't need to know how to use the pen tool or the Bezier curve or, or any of the other things that you think that's difficult to use. Now, I'll show you a quick one how it's done. Okay, Corel Draw X6. Let me open the file which is smear tool. Okay, so you find that this is vector design. You can see it's very, very sharp. Okay, now you want this bird to look a bit more aggressive, the video to be more aggressive, or the eyes to be sharper, so things like this, very, very simple. All you need to do, first thing to remember, is you must select the object that you want to have the smear, all right, or the changes to it. Okay, the smear tool can be found on the shape tool. You hold on to it, you'll see the one called smear. These four are the new tools in X6. Okay, so smear. Oop, brush a bit too big, reduce smaller. Okay, now you'll find that I want to increase the sharpness here. You pull. Okay, just like using water, water color and then just pull. Okay, how you want to pull, you pull. Okay, you find that it's too sharp. Okay, so wherever you pull, you just pull for you. You want the eyes here to be sharper, do it carefully, bit by bit. Okay, it just smears for you, it helps you to smudge the thing. Okay, you want sharper beak, you can increase the beak, up to you. Now, Things like this, let's say for example, you want to smear the top part here, the video, but you do not want to touch any part of the legs, the body, and so on. Now, before you do any smearing, you have to ungroup it, because now it is one group. Okay, I select everything as one whole. So I ungroup it. You can see that I can select individual items now. Okay, I'll just select this video to show you that this is the one that I want. I'll select it, I'll click on smear. Now I can smear whatever I want without affecting the legs. Okay? Without affecting any of part of the legs. Okay? No matter I try to smear any part here, it doesn't work. Okay? Because I did not select the bird, I only select the words. Okay? So this one look a bit more funky now, a bit more branch. Okay? So you can do things like this before really cool stuff, or you can go really crazy and then you just go do things like this okay so before and after smear tool is really really fantastic to use you can sm smudge any of the vector design you, sc you scroll in you can still see that it is still in vector okay they're all vector very sharp so this is one of the tool that i think is really cool which i can't find it on any of the other softwares yet okay which is the smear tool fantastic all right any questions for this Original uh, image must be a vector image. Yeah, yeah, correct. Bitmap. Bitmap. Ah, uh, I'll show you next one how to do. Bitmap is that there is one um, cool function inside here now. It's called Power Trace. It helps you to trace bitmap images. Yeah. So complex images like this can be a bit tricky, but um, logos and all this is pretty good in comparison to to other softwares. Okay. Now the next one I will show you would be after smear tool. There's one called repair or what? This is one of the tools I've been looking for for a while. Okay, things like this. Again, I have I type a content magnifying glass and I did the design of this. But the thing is that these are not the magnifying glass. Okay, this one that was this one. Okay, so it helps me to bloat whatever content I have. Again, these are all in vector, not bitmap. So it helps you to increase uh, vector or liquefy things like this okay so the next one I'll show you would be I'll just close this for a while repel tool 
All right, so again, these are all in vector. Again, I show you all in vector design. Okay, now let's say I want to involve the word magnifying and glass. Again, you must ensure you select both of them. Okay, you must always select whatever you want. In here, together with your smear, you have one called repel. Right, so repel again, increase the size of the brush so that it's not too small. How big you want to repel? Like that. Okay, so when I click on it, it increases for me. Very easy to do. Okay, again, it is all in vector. All right, not even bitmap, which is fantastic. Okay, you find that? Oh no, that's not what I want. I want it to go in, not repel. Well, there's also one called attract. This is the opposite of what you have done. It goes in instead. Okay, so these are really cool tools that you can use inside here, and it's again in vector. This is the most important part. Okay, so you can do things like that, which I already done show you, or you can do things like that. Both repel and track. Okay, very very simple to do, but again, helps you save a lot of time. Uh, if your client wants you to do this, okay. So, any questions for this before I go on to the next one? No. Okay, next one, repel tool. Next is power clip. Now, again, I like to use this tool because there are a lot of flexibility in this. Okay, you want to put this really cool design into the text, and maybe you want to do something else again after you have done that. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, I'll remove this for a while. Next one will be power clip. Okay, so this is the one I did after. This is before. Now, if you want the design to go into power clip or power fill itself, it's very easy to do. Okay, all you need to do is select this pattern here. Right click. On top here, there's one called power clip inside. Right on the top. Click on that. You want it to clip in this content here. It goes in. Very easy to do. Okay, now, if you find that you want to edit the clip, you can click on this. It goes into edit mode. You can do whatever you want with it. Change the design, change the color, move it around. Okay, once you're done, this one exits it. Go back out again. Okay. You want to select the content because something you want to do with it. Okay. Or you want to extract out in case that you do not want it anymore, just extract it, you can move it away. Okay? Remove it out of the power clip. Okay, this one helps you to do a little bit of alignment, fitting inside the, the power field word itself. Now, what happens if that let's say I have oops one more image I want to put inside after I've done the pattern. A little bit more complex stuff. Okay, now I want to clip this inside here also. Okay, so things that you do, you do not need to unclip that to put the two of them inside. You can just do the same as what you did earlier. Right click, clip, and go inside. Okay, so next thing you can do is say, now I want to edit. I don't want the image to be in front. I want it to be behind the pattern. So no problem. Just edit. You can see the two images are here. Okay, do anything you want to it. Increase the size if you need to. Now you can't see the pattern, not to worry. Right click, just do a little bit of ordering change to the back of layer. See, now the pattern is in front. Okay, once you're done, exit. And then you have your design. Image is behind, pattern is in front. And you find that, oh, I do not want the pattern anymore. I just want the image. Click on the pattern, delete away. And then exit. Your image is there. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward to do things like this. You want to add in and enhance your content with an image or with a design. It's up to you. Okay, you can move the image anywhere you want. Okay, just cool things like this. All right. Yeah. Does it, uh, when you do a power clip, does mm. it always uh, go to the center? Uh, normally, it, it goes where you play, where you put it. If it's on the left, it goes in through the left. 
If it's on center, you just go straight into the center. Yeah, but you can always. Which one? The X5. And. Uh, for power clip, no, not that, not not that, not that um powerful yet. Yeah. Okay, this one gives you a lot of editability now in X6. Yeah, a bit more customized style. Yes, this is the last one of Corel Draw. That's a simple function. Power trace, which is just now uh, I think you guys were mentioning. You want to trace an image, complex image like this, or you want to trace a simple logo. I'll show you this one, Power Trace. Okay, I'll just remove this for a while. Okay, now this is a bitmap image. If I zoom in, you can see it's bitmap, right? Pixelated. Okay. What happens is that if you want to trace and complex things like this, okay, let's say your client say, I want this to be frame up A1, A2 size, AO size. Bitmap have problem with that if it's a small image like this. So what you do is that you can have one function called trace bitmap. Outline trace, you can do things like this. Okay, different detail of the tracing. If you want to do a high quality image trace like this, it's the high quality image function there. Which is using many, many colors. Let it um, process for a while. It'll take a while because this one is really, really huge. Okay, the more details you have, the longer it takes. But again, it's not very, very long before you get the outcome. It's almost there. This is the result that you will get. Okay, how many points? 41,000 points, 200 over colors involved here. Okay, to do a, a vector design like this is going to drive you all, all of us mad. Okay, this is the after. That's the before. Okay, so once you're done with this, you click OK. Now you zoom in. You see, it's vector design. Okay, it traces out all the vector points that you have, all the different <coughs> sets of colors involved. Because as this is like a watermark poster, yeah, you have things like this, okay, which is really really cool. Now, you may not always have projects like this. You have things like let's say you have a logo now. I added a new page here so that we all can see. I downloaded this logo of Kafu, which is really, really small. You can see it's only a 72 dpi image, a web image. Okay. If you want to redraw this or you want to trace this, it can take time, of course. It's not impossible to do it. Okay. If I go in, you can see it is Bitmap, right? Okay. Now, if you want to trace things like this, again, trace Bitmap, outline trace, logo. No need detail because this is only a two color logo. You don't need to go into detail. So logo, click on it. This is faster because not much details are involved. Before and after. You see the accuracy of the tracing? Okay, it's very, very accurate. Now you say a uh, simple logo like this. You find that, oh, I got another client who gives me other logos like this. A bit more colors this time around. Oh, things like this. Okay, you find that oh, I'm not going to trace that. It's going to take me too much time. Again, this is from a web. Uh, download it from a web. All right. So same thing. Outline trace. Oh, again, logo, not details. Okay. Now, if I zoom in, can you see how fantastic it is? The tracing is almost perfect. Okay. Even the sharpness here is there. The roundness is all there. Once you're done, okay. Then you have your vector design. You can do whatever you want with it. Okay, ungroup it. Okay, do anything you want with it. All right. Any questions for this? Trace. It will add in more colors. Tones of colors, yeah. If let's say, uh, shapes like will mm, the shape will remain, but just more tones, like what you see the previous painting, yeah. Instead of just five, six colors, I guess you probably have 15, 20 colors, different tones of red, blue, yellow, green, purple, yeah. Okay.